because you can see how that line leaves no room for expectations. Those who see themselves as whole make no demands. You're, those who see themselves as whole are, are not at the mercy of anyone or anything. You consequently would have no expectation because there would be nothing perceived as needed. Yeah. And in that scenario, of course, can, could not be upset. They could not be unfairly treated based on a seeming change in what someone said or did, they couldn't perceive themselves as unfairly treated. They couldn't perceive themselves as someone breaking their word or doing something, you know, against them when they see themselves as the dreamer of the dream and they don't, they no longer perceive attack. So lack, if we take it a little step further, then lack or incompletion or scarcity is what has to be addressed, so let's address it. Take a look at that. The, the fundamental thing that we'll keep going over many, many, many times is that the deceived mind doesn't know what it is and therefore it doesn't know, doesn't know how to extend. It doesn't know what giving is. It doesn't see that giving and receiving are equal or the same. You know, how many times have we heard these cliches in this world about, you know, the importance of giving or even the, the cliche about it is better to give than to receive. That's even off. Because you can't, you can't give without receiving. The mind gets exactly what it wants and it's always giving and receiving and it's impossible. It, it's better to give than to receive because they're the same. You can't put one as higher than another. But the, the key thing is, for the deceived mind, the deceived mind doesn't have a clue what giving is. Because it believes in the ego, and it believes in form and specifics, and so therefore, believing in specifics, it doesn't know what giving is. Because giving doesn't, in the end, have anything to do with specifics. Neither does extending. So another way we could come at it, we could say as, as long as, as the mind feels incomplete and lacking and, and it sees all these expectations, it has all these expectations of other people, even expectations of this person, of the person that it identifies as itself. You've heard of you know, placing high standards or I put so much pressure on myself. That has to be the ego talking. Christ doesn't put pressure on himself. You know, it's, it's the ego that puts pressure, it's the ego that sets up expectations, personal expectations. I have to live up to somebody else's standards, or I have to live up to these standards that I'm setting for myself. But that's not the, the capital self, that's the ego. So even that would be in the realm of expectations. But the, in the end, the, the only realization that you're ever asked to make is, or ever asked to come to, is that that having and being are the same. Having and being, giving and receiving are the same. Having and being, in other words, when the mind believes it's asleep, with, when it believes, when it thinks it's in a world, we should say, that it, it associates itself with a person, with a body, and it associates everything in the world with specifics and therefore it believes that it believes in pos in personal possessions even it believes it has a body that it possesses and that is is probably of all things in this world of possessions that's its, the deceived mind the deceived mind's most prized possession is the body that's why in cases of rape and incest and injury it, it just seems to be such a deep wound because the mind feels like it's been personally violated. 
much less when somebody breaks into one's car or breaks into one's house. But but when there's something that's done to the body, since the mind identifies with the body, it feels a sense of violation, a strong sense of victimization. So right off the bat, the deceived mind thinks it has a body. It po thinks it possesses a body. Then it thinks it possesses other things, green paper strips, houses, cars, clothing, jewelry. You know, it thinks it possesses computers or just fill in the blank of all the things in the world, dogs, cats. It thinks it possesses biological family members. It thinks it possesses uh, maybe a, a religion or, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. And all of it, it are... All of it reflects this confusion about having, because it thinks it has these things, but in truth, that isn't what having means. You can't have a hundred dollars. You can't have a husband. You can't have a body. You can't have a skill at playing the piano or a skill at playing baseball. You can't have mathematical ability. You can't have high IQ or verbal ability. You can't have any of that stuff because none of that stuff is real. How can you have something that isn't real? So the teachings of the Course are what you have is what you are. That's it. That's what having means. Having and being are, are identical. Do you see how a recognition or a realization of that, do you even have a hint of how a realization of that would, would bring an end to all this seeking outside oneself on the screen, would bring an end to expectations and expecting others to do what they said they would do or whatever, however you have it constructed. That's all it takes. It's free. This realization is free. It doesn't cost anything. There is no cost associated with recognizing that what you have is what you are. It's given. That, that was given to you when you were created by God. And nothing can take that away from you. You can cover it over in your consciousness. You can bury it. You can deny it. You can keep it out of awareness. But you can't destroy it, and you can't change it. You can just accept it. And it's the associations that cover it over. It's all those things that you said you can't have. It's like you can associate with them, but you can't have them. Right. And it's one or the other. Actually, it's only one, but it seems an awareness to be one or the other. Read just a little bit from the Attainment of the Real World section. Ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. The ego wants to have things for salvation, for possession is its law. Possession for its own sake is the ego's fundamental creed, a basic cornerstone in the churches it builds to itself. And at its altar it demands you lay all of the things it bids you get, leaving you no joy in them. Everything the ego tells you that you need will hurt you, for although the ego urges you again and again to get it leaves you nothing. For what you get, it will demand of you. And even from the very hands that grasped it, it will be wrenched and hurled into the dust. For where the ego sees salvation, it sees separation. And so you lose whatever you have gotten in its name. Therefore, ask not of yourself what you need, for you do not know. And your advice to yourself will hurt you. For what you think you need will merely serve to tighten up your world against the light and render you unwilling to question the value 
that this world can really hold for you. So the very beginning of that passage I read, ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. It leaves space for the metaphor. In other words, as messengers of peace, there may be instances where someone seems to own something in the world. It may seem that they own a house or a car or a computer or so on and so forth. So this leaves room in there for the metaphor. Ownership, ownership is a dangerous concept if it is left to you. So the Holy Spirit can use the concept of ownership and use, while the mind still believes in it, and it's still working with the mind where it thinks it is, where it perceives itself, then the concept of ownership can, can be part of the backdrop. However, once you pull that concept of ownership out of the backdrop, so to speak, and you really believe you can own things, it is dangerous. Notice that your peace of mind <laughs> is out the window when you really believe that you possess something whether it's a body, a thing, money, car, doesn't matter. You will know, you will notice immediately that your peace of mind is gone because you will be defending that thing, whatever that is, that body, that car, that money, that clothing, that jewel. You know, it can be anything. So that's the key thing because I, I know others have, there have been those that have misinterpreted something like this and you know, said, well, ownership is of the ego, therefore rent. You know, we've discussed this before. That does not bring you peace and happiness to think that you can just shift the form of owning something to leasing something. <laughs> it should be so easy <laughs> that you just lease everything, you know. You have to question every value in your mind if you want to let go of, <laughs> of ownership you know, and let go of the ego, much less have a little formship like that.